Most people in America are looking at how to make a life worth living in retirement with having. When I do these audio casts, I'm always amazed at how life-inspired events are not being able to be the focus or the forefront of what my plan was. What I am hearing God say is share this particular experience with the world. So I'm going to do that. Today, I was approached by a little Mexican fellow who was about 10. And while I don't usually take money from children, I did take a little dollar, receive a little gift, from that boy um, on behalf of his father from him. I did that because the child had to realize that his father was correct. And what we have to do is say the things that my mother always held true to, is you don't have to like it, you just have to do it. And that sometimes was a constant statement from my mother when we had to do chores, when I had to go to places like to the symphony. And it's true, she would say, you don't have to like it, but you have to come. And then I'd get there, and I would never really tell them that I liked it, but I usually would thank my dad for taking me there. And that was that. <laughs> my parents were cultured people. They were raised in a way that made them understand that culture and education and music and theater was really important to them. And they loved to dance together and all sorts of waltzing. They were pretty good at it, in truth. But then they had danced together for a really long time until my late father couldn't dance anymore. And when I talk about this, I can also tell you about other players that try to play up to me today. I did talk to a marvelous little girl who read and rode, and rode a moped, and it was a little bitty rock star thing that was electric and super silent like a ninja, and I really appreciated that. But it cost her $2,200, which I thought, wow, that's a lot for that. And mine, as a 15-year-old boy, was about mm, $500, I think, 600 at best. And I had to earn that money through babysitting and through garage um, sorry, lawn mowing and other things that I could do, and I think I did bird sitting and other things to have that. It also had being an Italian brand uh, that I don't think is still in our land, at least in terms of the new version. Um, it also had a really great resale value. I think I sold it for almost as much as I paid for it, and that was pretty great for that. In time, we have to look at what is and isn't available to us. Later in the day, a Catholic boy who was a senior in high school came up to me and tried to offer me things out of his garbage bags, not all, his Dollar Tree bags. And when I make these missteps, it's sort of eclectic, but in that truth, he kept trying to play me with things that I couldn't eat. And it just goes to show this is why I usually decline any type of bag of treats, that nine times out of ten, I am allergic to the item, I have some sort of uh, situation that occurs in my body if I eat the item and openly I have sort of preferences for food just like everybody else. A little bit later a woman actually pursued me after I moved myself completely and tried to hand me a gift bag from the Dollar Tree and I said no to that immediately because the truth is I don't want people to choose food for me. At the age of myself I want to explain to women and to men that it is incredibly immoral for you to presume the power of purchase for me. While it is a loving kindness in your mind, it is not done for that way. Because when you're trying to help someone, you simply ask, Hey, have you had any food today? Or, Hey, is there any way I can help you in any way? And, Hey, I'm not going to do this at all to harm you and supply me with some superiority attitude. And I had to decline this heavyset woman who was clearly Catholic by the clothes she was wearing and the hairstyle she was carrying and the way that she was approaching me because the way she approached me was incredibly immoral. Are you staying out here? First of all, where I stay, where I lodge, where I sleep, where I nap is none of her fucking business. That is the most inappropriate question you can ever ask someone that you presume, assume, or know could possibly be homeless. The best thing you can say to someone is to focus on their food because my guess is you're not going to come up with the money that will allow a person to stay in a short-term, short-stay hotel where they will be not pissed on by some law enforcement officer or some hotel hop or bellhop clerk that will just fuck them over for the fact that you'll walk in there and say, this is my homeless friend and I'm going to pay for the thing. That's not how it works. When a person who's a speaker like me who travels the nation for jobs or doing things for consulting or photography or whatnot, that's not how we get employed, and that's not how our hotels are cared for. Our hotels are paid for by the company and the organization that says, we've got someone coming to stay in your hotel. Here is the company name, here is the company credit card, here is the organization credit card, and the guest is coming. You don't need to take a thing from him because he is on our company responsibility. All you need to know is that we're having one guest stay in your hotel. 
and the absolute fact is you don't even have to have my name. If you get my name, then you leave my name alone. You don't have to expect me to not be the person that I am because no other person in the land should know that I'm coming there. And that's how that should be handled. Now, when I'm talking about these things, I'm usually talking about the concepts of the three S's. The three S's are my concept, and I've sort of shifted the language on them a little bit as I've grown to talking to people, and I do shift language sometimes. I do shift explanation sometimes, depending on the social economic demographic of the individual of which I'm talking to about homelessness. Obviously, if I'm talking to a little girl who's six or eight in front of her mom about being homeless and thanking her for her gift card or whatever that she and her family has decided within their heart to do for me based on seeing one of my signs that just say, I'm a speaker. This is the stuff I talk about. It's on my rig. It's on my rollator. That's the truth. That's the way it goes. And she talks to me. I'm going to talk like an educator. I'm going to talk with a gentle voice. I'm going to talk in a way that both mom and child have a chance to see my eyes and know me. If I'm talking to a teenager, that's a little bit different. I might be a little bit more uh, slang-oriented. I might be a little bit more cool. I might be a little bit more talkative. But I'm still going to read the individual like I do with that boy who's Catholic. I said, my understanding is you have a great mathematics science skill and you like to blow shit up. And he said, yes, I do. And he said, so therefore God was absolutely right about the child. But he did kept trying to play me with stuff that he really had bought for himself. And while I appreciate that, it wasn't anything right for me. And I do have preferences. And I do have those indications of allergies. So I can't do that. When I'm talking, of course, to a professional person who kindly comes up to me and said, hey, we got an email about this. Could I talk to you a few minutes? I'd say, absolutely, just let me get to a stopping point if I'm in the middle of working, and let me talk with you. My challenge is I don't have a chair for you to sit on. Now, if you're light enough, you can sit on my cooler, but I've already bent my cooler from sitting on it, but you're welcome to do it too. Or I can say, give you my bucket to sit on, and I'll sit on the floor for you. But if you want to do that, throw a chair, a collapsible chair in your car, which you probably have there anyway for the marvelous times you want to eat outside at lunchtime or the times you want to go for a picnic with your family, and openly we can sit and have a talk. But I don't want to be played with by someone making a choice for me. And the truth is, you're probably no different. My guess is if you have a total stranger come up to you and try to hand you a bag of something, that you're going to be not only remotely curious, but you're also going to be like, hmm, this is a little bit odd for me, and I'm not sure it's safe for me, and I'm going to be a little bit cautious, and I'm going to be a little bit premature and saying, no, thank you, please.